Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the precipitation and temperature over the next five days from the latest UK Met Office run and then we'll have a look at the longer range with all the various mid to long range front models and the ensembles as well as it continually looks pretty chilly over the coming weeks. Temperatures are going to be around or below average for the majority of the next two weeks. And it does look like perhaps towards the start of May, we could see a proper polar plunge, proper Arctic wind arrive. Not only keeping things colder than average, but potentially turning it significantly colder than average. Not expecting anything majorly wintry by any means, but we could be seeing a return to white widespread overnight frosts, chilly days with temperatures in the mid to high single digits perhaps maybe 10 11 12 degrees in the far south and we could even see some wintry showers around as well for a few places nothing major but for the start of may it will be very cold indeed and it's looking more and more likely every single day so have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video so remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. If we do start on the live radar, you can see it is another pretty dry day. Now, a few showers have broken out in the far south of Ireland and a few across southern Wales and southwest England. As expected, we did have a look at that yesterday, but they're not really widespread at all. Um, just a few areas seeing some precipitation. Majority, it's a pretty dry day. Some thicker cloud around. Um, especially further east was coming in off the North Sea and it has felt a little bit chillier today with a stronger easterly wind as we'll see with the pressure charts in a minute those ice advance squeezed a little bit tighter today and that meant that easterly flow is a little bit stronger and it just keeps those temperatures down by a degree or two but as soon as that wind does die down a little bit and you see a bit of sunshine it is quite warm out there still sort of mid-teens but feeling a little bit chillier because of that brisker wind today so if you do have a look at the temperatures once again, so this is, as I'm recording this around 5pm, so we have sort of seen peak temperatures and very similar places to yesterday. Further westwards has definitely been favoured, further eastwards chillier, so sort of the best spots in England really has been across the sort of central southern England, down into parts of South Wales, into Bristol area, Taunton, Bournemouth, Southampton, all quite warm, stretching perhaps into western parts of London though. But for the far southeast, East Anglia, all the way through northeast England, it's pretty chilly with less, uh, with more yellow and bluey colours there than yellow and orange colours. So orange being more mid to high teens, blues being more 9 to sort of 12 degrees, so a little bit chillier there. And we've also seen some warmer temperatures once again further north and westwards, of course, towards the Liverpool area, back towards sort of St. Helens, um, into Southport. Um, looking at Formby again, seeing potentially quite warm temperatures there again. It's because of the fern effect with the easterly winds coming up over the Peak District, and as those winds descend in off the mountains, um, they do compress and we do see uh, that air warm up. So chilly uh, to the east of the Peak District and over the higher ground and then to the west uh, it is quite warm, uh, getting up into the high teens again. So it is just sort of the orographics of England that does create these sort of temperature contrasts when we do see the e these easterly winds. But similarly, when we see westerly winds, it's warmer on the eastern side. So it, it, it is just, it, it is what it is. And that is very similar again across western parts of Scotland, quite warm for the far west, chilly on the east and most of Ireland and Northern Ireland is pretty decent again a little bit chill in the east but more sheltered with less of the North Sea influence so it is still pretty decent around there so we do have a look at the UK Met Office run look at the precipitation temperature over the next few days you can see as of this afternoon was a few showers forecasted where we've seen the live radar. A few more perhaps across the south of South Wales and southwest England on the model and we haven't seen those develop but uh, it is got it's done pretty well um, and through tonight, a few showers again for the far southwest, but then clearing up. And by tomorrow afternoon, maybe a few showers popping up in some cumulus clouds across central belt of England. Uh, but again, quite a nice sunny day, but easterly flow. And we see that continuing into Monday. Perhaps more of a showery outbreak further southwards, but still pretty decent. And again, into Tuesday, very similar. Showers across parts of Southern Ireland, but cloud and some sunshine around, but again, an easterly flow. The wind is veering more to a northerly, though, as we head towards uh, the middle to end of next week. And that is setting up this chillier spell of weather we're seeing at the end of the month and potentially a very 
or much colder than average spell of weather towards the start of May. I can't really say very cold because it's not very cold compared to a January or February polar plunge, but it is very cold for this time of year. And again, beyond that, just generally could be dry, some sunshine, but some thicker cloud around at times, and a few showers. If we do have a look at those wind gusts, though, you can see it is sort of 20, 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts. So it's not crazy at wind speeds, but it's enough, to, as I said, to just take the chill off the air. Again, look at the mean winds. You can see 10 to 20 miles per hour quite widely. So again, nothing really strong to uh, create any damage or anything, but just a little bit chilly out there. Um, as said, through this afternoon, yeah, 10, 20, maybe getting a little bit high again. Look at the wind gusts this afternoon, perhaps 30, 40 miles per hour seen in a few spots. So strong, but not too crazy. If we do have a look at max temperatures, you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking once again, as said, where we saw the live radar down 16, 17 degrees in the far southwest, parts of Northern Ireland, parts of Ireland as well, Republic of Ireland, and again across the northwest and western parts of Scotland as well. Getting up into those mid to maybe high teens in a few spots, but as I said, further eastwards, more like 10 to 12 degrees, a little bit cooler in some spots. As we head through to Sunday afternoon, um, you can see again what temperatures peaking again in that far south and southwest corner, 18, 19 degrees. And again, we could see those warmer temperatures across the northwest, western parts of Scotland and Ireland as well. Further eastward, still a little bit chillier, but a few warmer temperatures there popping, popping up in London and East Anglia, maybe 16, 17 degrees. Again, pretty chilly overnight Monday, potentially getting into mid to low single digits. And then Monday is a, a chillier day. Maybe 14, 15 degree peak temperatures. So a little bit chillier, but nothing too crazy cold. And Tuesday, again, chilly. 14, 15 degrees in the bullseye in sort of southwest England, but widely 10 to 12 degrees. Again, northerly flow starting to come in. And we see similar on Wednesday, maybe 15, 16 in the far south, but only 10 to 12 degrees further northwards. And by Thursday morning, much colder. And that's because we have much colder air starting to swing in from the north. Early hours of Thursday, you can see that cold air just lingering to our north. It isn't bitterly cold in terms of our temperatures yet, but they are coming, and that's something we do need to keep an eye on. So we do now have a look at the pressure charts. We have a look at the GFS. So you can see at the moment, we do have those strengthening easterly winds. Those ice bars are packed together in a little bit more, giving that chill to the air in from the east. Again, this would be a very snowy um, and very cold pattern if we'd seen this even two or three months ago, very cold indeed. But as I said, end of April, start of May, it is still not too bad uh, across Europe. Temperatures are on the increase, sun strength is pretty high. So again, temperatures are not too cold at all. And when we see those uh, sunshine come out, temperatures responding where we said in those spots, Southwest England, Northwest England, down into Scotland, uh, Western parts of Scotland and Ireland, getting up towards mid high teens. So not too bad at all. Beyond that, those ice bars continue, but perhaps sort of slacken a little bit towards the start of next week, and we see more of a northerly flow come in. Again, nothing crazy at this stage, even towards the next weekend, just a little bit chillier air coming in from the north or northeast. But it's as we head towards the next weekend, we see a bit of retrogression up towards Greenland and a northerly wind plunging down by day 10. And that's where the time frame we're looking at now. So day 10 is where this northerly wind is. It had sort of the last few days had been sort of the peripheries of the Eastern UF and the GM runs, which only go out to 240 hours but we had seen it on the extended range of the GFS but we're now starting to see it around 200 240 hours so it's starting to edge its way into the shorter term it does look quite likely but it's not really guaranteed until we're seeing consistency on it that's sort of the day seven time frame so over the next two or three days we'll be able to firm it up for sure but it is still looking quite likely very cold northerly wind coming in there and then seeing another sort of bout of northerly winds right towards the end of the run. Real chilly indeed and unsettled. Wouldn't be surprised to be seeing um, some wintry showers with that, some snow maybe um, and very strong winds feeling really cold, really quite cold wind chill. If I do run that back to have a look at the upper air temperatures at the moment. Um, the Andrew of pH3 temperatures, you can see not too cold at all, but more of an orderly flow coming in by the start of next week, so the zero degree isotherm coming in. And that cold air is just to our north, out towards Scandinavia, and as I said, as we head towards 240 hours, plunging air out of the Arctic, a little bit warm for a period before we see another plunge of bitterly cold air coming out of the Arctic, really cold indeed. And if we have a look at the temperature deviations... Uh, from normal, uh, so blues, much colder than average, you can see that, a good 4 to 6 degrees below average, but we do see again, a little bit milder in the south, and perhaps for a day or two, and then finally another real cold plunge in from the north, 
bitterly cold getting down to 10 to 12 degrees below average um, again i have to be very careful with what i say because it is not going to be beast from the east level yes the temperature deviation or as if uh, it looks, sort of looks like it's a beast in the east, but that's because our average this time of year is around freezing or a couple of degrees above freezing at 850 HPA. So sort of minus 5, minus 8 degrees at 850 HPA is 10 degrees below average. However, if we saw this sort of scenario in February or January, it'd be maybe 2 or 3 degrees below average. So it's not crazy cold, but for this time of year, it is really quite cold. Potentially, we'd be like the coldest on our latitude uh, throughout the globe, potentially. Again, very difficult to say because there'll be parts in sort of eastern, uh, eastern Europe um, and towards sort of Russia area that uh, perhaps are a little bit colder. But... We could be sort of one of the coldest areas on our latitudes. And considering we didn't see that much cold in the winter, it is, yeah, a little bit frustrating if you are a snow lover to not see any of these cold pl polar plunges um, during the winter. But, of course, it's been caused by that early stratospheric warming that we saw. Uh, and we may have a look at that in more depth in this coming week in, in a video or, or maybe one of the podcast episodes. So we'll have a look at that probably in this coming week. Something else we can have a look at is the potential equivalent temperatures, and you can see again very cold, and just gives you the uh, an another way of viewing the air masses. You can see really cold purples there coming in, right in from the Arctic, following those isobars back. Really cold indeed. So you do now have a look at the GEM run, see that how that does compare. We'll run through this quite quickly because again. It's very similar to the GFS. Just interested to see what its end product is at day 10. So again, not more of an orderly flow coming in this week. Very consistent from the models. Maybe some more low pressure mixing in. And as we head towards day 10, that northerly wind is flooding in. We've got a bit of a low over the top. And once that clears, you can see all this cold air is spilling out of the Arctic. Bitterly cold. Minus 15 degree ice firm moving into Iceland. Minus 10 just to the tip of Scotland. Look at that temperature deviation. A good 10 to 12 degrees below average plunging southwards. So if you have a look at the ECMWF run, see how that does compare again. Easterly winds at the moment. High pressure retrogressing out towards Greenland to more of a northerly flow this coming week. And that high pressure really gets going towards Greenland. And as we head towards day 10, we are plunging into a northerly wind. Not quite a direct northerly, a little bit of kink in the isobars there, but that's because that low pressure system hasn't sort of moved out. Uh, and you can see it is cold. Not quite as cold as the other ones, but it still is a northerly wind and still would produce colder, much colder than average conditions. Look at the temperature deviations. It's only 4 to 6 degrees below average, not quite 10 or 12 degrees below average like we were seeing on the other runs. So, yes, there is a bit of a, a bit of uncertainty with the exact severity of the northerly wind because it, all models are going for it now. Um, and they have sort of all hinted at it at least for the last two or three days. So pretty high confidence we're going to be seeing this. If we have a look at the ensembles, if we start with the GFS ensembles, you can see a little bit mild at the moment, turning a little bit chilly over the coming days with more of a northerly flow. Returns more to around average for next weekend. And then beyond that, that's where we start to see those colder runs, real cold runs. The average, a good couple degrees below the 1981-2010 mean. Yes, some milder outliers, but majority go pretty cold at one point at least down to sort of minus two minus four minus six degrees at 850 hpa and remember we're looking at london which is very far southwards further northwards much more likely to be seeing that minus five minus six minus seven degree isotherm come in and remember it's not always about the exact upper air temperatures because again this is just a slice of the atmosphere. It's about what it's doing the whole way through the atmosphere. Uh, and coming in from the north, it's going to be very cold all the way through the atmosphere, which means overnight frosts and wintry showers could be quite likely, um, where uh, with dew points low as well. And precipitation signal is increasing as well with that, potentially with more, more, even more low pressure around. If you look at the dew points, you can see in the longer term, if we do get it to load, uh, it doesn't look like it's loading, unfortunately. So if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures instead, you can see again, 15 degrees uh, the next day or two, and then dropping down to more, to more towards 12, 13, 14 degrees. And in the longer term, very big uncertainty. Some only around 9, 10 degrees, others getting up towards high teens. And again, it's all down to towards the exact wind direction. If we try again, have a look at those dew points. You can see they're loading now. You can see more towards freezing around the first few days of May, maybe one or two degrees. And again, there's some much milder outliers that is sort of lifting that average up. Quite a few in around the 2nd to the 8th of May going below freezing. 
So you finally finish up by having a look at the ECM WF ensembles, which definitely have been onto this uh, or onto this northerly plunge a little bit better than the GFS. So you can see over the next week, chillier conditions coming in, returning to around average for the last day or two of April, and then the start of May. Good few degrees below average. The average of the ensembles getting down to sort of minus two, minus three, and as I said, this is London, which is likely to be a little bit milder, a good couple of degrees milder than it is further northwards. And you can see quite a few getting down to that minus four to minus six degree level. Precipitation increasing as well, looking very cold indeed to start May. And again, if you have to go those two meter temperatures, again in the longer term, looking quite li widely ten to twelve degrees, perhaps some slightly warmer for a couple of days, but again. Again, that's these milder outliers are pushing it up. Uh, and majority of these cold runs with that colder polar plunge, likely only around 8, 9, 10 degrees. Very cold indeed. And if I do just briefly have a look at Glasgow, just to emphasise how the north is going to be much, much colder. Look at those two metre temperatures. You can see again more towards 8, 9 degrees, even around the 3rd, 4th of May. The average even with milder outliers, it's down to sort of 7, 8 degrees. Very cold indeed. And look at the 850 HPA temperatures. Widely down to that minus 4, minus 6 or below. Some even touching on minus 10 degrees. Very cold across Glasgow and, and generally Scotland over the next couple of weeks. Widely below average. And as I said, towards that sort of 2nd, 6th of May period, you can see that dip by a degree or two. And that's where we can see that real cold polar plunge. But for the time being, regardless of the severity of this northerly wind that we could be seeing towards the start of May, it is looking generally chillier than average. Yes, there will be some decent days around, but it is going to feel pretty cold, especially further eastwards and northwards you are, as that's where the general wind direction is going to be coming over the coming days uh, and the coming week or so. Yes, as I said, there will be warmer days, especially further southwards and westwards, and again locally in like areas like the northwest leeward side of the peak district we could be seeing warmer temperatures there as well so it's going to be very microclimate sort of conditions where some areas will be seeing eight nine ten degrees chilly cloudy others could see 15 16 degrees lighter winds sunshine feeling more summer or spring like so we'll have to keep an eye on it over the coming weeks and the coming days but it is looking pretty chilly uh, over the next few days and potentially even into the start of may with this potential real cold northerly wind so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon